All right, we're back. With Mama Liz's chili oil. <laughs> Today, we are going to make that jump. I don't promise anything else, but we're going to make that jump, okay? It's guaranteed. Did you see that? And now it sounds like you're a certified freak. I don't think so. I think I'm mostly like a normal guy. Certainly, I wouldn't be a, a certified freak seven days a week. I think at, at some point you would just consider that, to be honest, to be kind of like exhausting. There's times you just want to like go to sleep. Seven days a week, you got to unionize. That's true. That's hard work, man. It's not that hard, <laughs> I guess. But I mean, there's worse jobs. Don't get me wrong. But like, you know, sometimes you might be like, I'm actually sleepy. Oh, you're right. The shortcut, the shortcut. Okay, hang on, hang on. That was huge. This isn't where we do it. This isn't where we do it. Hey, Anel, if you wanted to move to a four-day work week with more hours per day, I would support you. That could be fun. I don't think, like right now, I'm happy where I stand. If anything, people shore me for this all the time. I would love to... Um, Add a little bit of extra streaming time. Like, I would love to stream like 9 to 4. But I just don't know if it's uh, in, the, in reality for like a, any reasonable time frame. Because of my daughter's schedule. Because she's starting school in... September and like I don't know how junior kindergarten works <laughs> like I, I think you start school at like 8 30 or 9 30 and then like maybe it's done at 2 I, I honestly have no idea help me help me oh you just oh I'm okay What do people with real jobs do with their kids? I mean, I know how this sounds. You would be surprised at the number of them that have a nanny. Which, uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. But it's, I'm glad it's a step that we have not felt like we need to take. Because I feel like this is like a very precious time. Or you could, like, yeah, one and a half thousand dollars a month daycare. But even like the daycare that our daughter's in closes at like... 4.15. Okay, we're going to make this jump today. We're going to build something this summer. Close, close, close. Both of my kids are home with me while I work. They're seven and four. Honest question, how do you not get them to <laughs> bother you? <laughs> I love spending time with my child, but there's like when this when I carve out this five hours, I'm like, I need this for like serenity right now. This is like, you know, mental health. iPads? Well, now you're cooking. Mm -mm. Whoop. Gabby's Dollhouse, so true. Cakey, you know Cakey? I think it's the cat from Gabby's Dollhouse. Please don't give your kids iPads. Fucking 19-year-olds watching this on an iPad are like, please don't give your kids iPads. <laughs> I'm different, I'm older, my brain's 72% fully developed. 
I people are not going to like this take. Even some parents won't like this take. There's parents that are extremely anti-screen time, and I get it. You know, you only get one shot to raise your kid. There's, you know, reports out there that's like if your child ever sees a screen before the age of 10, their brain is permanently fried. I am not a child psychologist. Hang on one second. But I feel like there's a, a, my personal take is there is a slight moral panic about the concept of a screen. I think as long as you limit the screen time to something like, you know, a couple of hours a day maximum, and you watch what they're watching to make sure it's not like pure garbage, then like you can see the iPad as like a tool instead of as like a microwave that just like Apple's developed a screen that fries your brain. Like that doesn't make sense to me that there are people that are like, you know, literally, like cause my daughter will like watch her iPad and it's a, it's a channel where someone reads her like a storybook and she watches the whole video all the way through. And I'm like, okay, your kid is sitting on the hardwood floor with a toy hammer, like, bashing the shit out of your floor. Like, what's the... I'd rather have my kid getting a story read to them than, you know, just beating the shit out of my furniture. I mean, that stuff's expensive. So I'm not saying, you know, like, all the discussions about, you know, screen time are, are wrong. I just think when people are like, any screen time is obviously bad, I'm like, wait till your kid gets into the fucking real world, bro. The average adult is on a screen, like... <laughs> like 16 hours a day. <laughs> Maybe not 16, but like a lot at least. And like my kid is like learning how to fucking read. You're watching Love is Blind. Like honestly, you're not an authority. I'd rather trust her than trust you. Anyway, that's all I got. The unfortunate majority of people just let the iPad parent their kid. Listen, I'm not saying you're wrong, but I'm just saying, can you prove that you're right? Because I think it's an easy trap to fall into, to be like, parents are not good at raising their kids. You know, every older generation has been saying that about the younger generation for like, the, since the dawn of human society. Like, all the parents that I know, from what I can tell, they're... they're doing their best, but then sometimes, you know, both parents have to work, the kid's sick, the daycare's closed. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. You know, no plan survives contact with the enemy. You are dangerously minimalizing the impact of technology on young minds. Okay, like, no disrespect. Go live in the woods. If you're going to talk to me with a bad faith comment like that, do, go d divorce your life from technology. If you can do it, that's fine. Like, more power to you. But you're talking in Twitch chat right now, you fucking hypocrite. Let's chill. Like, can we just get along? <laughs> can we at least be well-mannered to each other? It's different. I'm 21. You're fucking cooked too, dummy. I'm cooked too. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I can't wait to look at my phone. And then I pick up my phone and I'm like, what am I even looking at? Then I put it down and I'm like, some phone would really go nice right now. You got to police it in yourself as well. I'm actually 34. Okay, then fucking include some sources. Isaac Newton. kids these days, 34-year-olds. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay, we're going to try this one again.
But we'll figure out. If my kid turns out cooked, I'll take the L. <laughs> mm, my bad, my bad. I was just practicing. Not even close. Not even close. I just think, I guess what it is for me is the, I, I think that it's whenever, uh, I don't want to call it a conspiracy theory. Whenever a, a popular idea of dubious merit, I'm being polite, okay? Whenever it makes it to critical mass, where it, it goes from like a scientific paper to like a, a, a real news report to then like AI generated clickbait that had the news report like fed into it that then gets posted on Twitter and people only read the headlines. Like it gets warped a little bit. I think we do have like a few hundred million people that are like, it's not the content on the iPad. It's the iPad itself. Like as long as my kid's watching the flat screen, it's okay. And I'm like, brother, have you turned on like network TV recently? It's all 25 words or less. Have you ever seen this game? The game shows that I used to watch when I was a kid, they had ads, don't get me wrong, okay? But this show is just an ad. Okay, hold, hold. Hold. When I was a kid, the game show host would make out with the contestants. Uh... Okay, Richard Dawson, to the best of my knowledge, did not make out with any contestants on the Fantastic Feud. I mean, the Family Feud, <laughs> which is fantastic. But he did kiss all the ladies on the cheek, for sure. And if somebody turned their hand, uh, turned their head and maybe got one peck on the lips, who's to say, man? You honestly think, like, people were just happier in the 1970s? You ever, if, if you don't believe that, go watch an episode of Richard Dawson on The Family Feud. It seems like, I mean, maybe it's not representative of society, but it seems like everybody's having a great time. You ever see the newlywed game? They could not run the newlywed game now. People would be like, Bob Eubanks, I'm not going to answer that question. That's private. Back in the day, the, you'd be like, all the husbands go in the back room, and then some stranger with a slick haircut would be like, what's your favorite place to get fucked? And they'd be like... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, Sally, flip it around in the ass. And everyone would go, wow, holy. <laughs> you couldn't make that show now. C comedy truly is dead. Whoa! You know what I was thinking? You don't see that many Maureens these days. I wasn't alive in the peak Maureen era. I feel like that definitely has to be the 70s, but I, I can't remember the last time I, I met someone that was like, my name is Maureen. You're, you're so right. There's fewer Eens out there these days. Come on, man. Come on, come on. Saw a woman on the apps named Maureen the other day. <laughs> what, what app? Fucking the septuagenarian. Oh, I'm, not, I'm just making a joke. I'm sure. I know what apps you're talking about. Grinder, right? Uber? Yay. All the dudes who went by Ronnie are gone. I, I mean, listen, you don't see that many Ronnies, I feel, and you don't see that many Rons. On the other hand, I actually think that, and I'm a part of the problem, I think I'm living in peak Ryan. I met like seven Ryans when I was on vacation, more than any other person whose name I learned, for sure. We did like an escape room style thing for families. The other dad in our group was named Ryan. Our server at breakfast one day was named Ryan. I went to get the massage. There was a Brian in the room with me. I also feel like, and I, I can't verify this, but I think I've said it before. I feel like my generation is, um, 
peak Justin. I feel like the first, obviously the first Justin was born in like the Byzantine Empire or something. <laughs> but then like peak Justin was definitely kids born like 1980 to 2000. It seems like it, you very rarely, and I, you know, I'm out at the playground from time to time playing with my daughter. You very rarely hear like a, a mom say like, Justin, get over here. Lots of Olivia's, Braden's. Olivia, that's a big one. Well, Jalen, lots of Lynn's just in general. Jackson, Jackson seems to be a big one. I feel like you don't meet that many Daves either. I feel like David definitely exists. I could imagine a child called David, but you don't, you don't see too many motherfuckers these days that are like, my name is Dave. Really, Prezzo? You're a, you're a Dave, huh? I always thought of you as like a, like a Scott, not in a negative way. Just kind of gave off like Scott vibes to me. Sounds negative? Well, it's insane to say, like, you look like your name is this. Like, you know that they gave them that name when they were, like, a baby, right? Like, they didn't know what was going on. Or are you suggesting the decisions that they made in their life since being named Scott are, like, you know, that led you to look like a Scott? See, Kyle's. <laughs> okay, well, I can't argue with that one. Okay, what do you think? What do you think? Right here? What's wrong with Kyle's? Kyle's, they just have a reputation for... for I don't know, for, for living each day like it's their last. For like punching a hole in a wall. Yeah, exactly. Kyle's have a reputation for calling their mom the B word. For hitting their mom. <laughs> it's, it's fucked up, man. I'm inclined to say if you, if you hit your mom, you're probably cooked. Is this a good spot to, to go, by the way? Higher, lower, higher, lower. Lower, higher, <laughs> two hands, no hands. I, I just believe that this is the spot, man. <laughs> not even close, not even close. POV, you're the rock face. I mean, it's, a, it's not an easy game. You guys ever see the subreddit Dog Free? <laughs> yes, I have. It's a satirical subreddit, right? It's a subreddit making fun of Child Free. People might think that I would support dog free because I make fun of child free from time to time. But actually, I don't know. I, I can only speak my truth. I have never had a problem like eating in a restaurant and there's like a dog there or like being in a store and there's a dog there and just, I mean, I'm, I'm not even like a dog guy. I'm kind of a cat guy, but I think also I'm kind of just like a no animal guy. <laughs> but like if, if I was in a restaurant and there were like dogs walking around and bumping into my legs all the time, I think I would be like, I'd be chill about it. Unless they're, you know, eating my food or peeing on the floor right next to me. 
At a restaurant? Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't bother me. Not even close. Not even close. You should jump from the bone as a joke. Okay, noted Marvel Snap Pro. Binks plays. Says jump from the bone is a joke. You might be stealth backseating me. In which case I appreciate it. Maybe we should try jumping from the bone as a joke. Ready? Watch this. I don't know, I'm just... It might surprise you because I got a lot of opinions. But like for the most part, I think my opinions are like pretty reasonable. <laughs> Which is crazy to me because people call them insane. But like I don't mind a dog being in the restaurant. But then people are like, oh, but like if somebody spends too long at the water fountain and you can't get a drink in time, you're like mad about it? I'm like, yeah, because you're an adult, bro. The dog's not part of society. No disrespect. When I see a kid at the water fountain and they're taking too long, I'm like, stay hydrated, girl. Like, you're, you're seven years old. I don't expect you to, you know, behave in a way that is most efficient, societally speaking. You've you got a lot of shit to figure out. It's a complicated world we live in. Your friends with horribly trained dogs are a part of society, though. I wouldn't even sweat it, to be honest. Honestly, it, like, there's been situations where I've been in the park and there's been, like, a dog going crazy. It doesn't even make my heart rate uh, rise because I'm like, if that dog came over, I'm winning. It's just not going to happen. There are some dogs where maybe I'd have like a little bit of pause, but like there's, I'm, I live in Vancouver, okay? Those dogs, you don't see that often. See a lot of like little dogs going crazy and then they like look at me and look at my daughter and they're like about to dig and start running. I'm like, try it, motherfucker. Go ahead. I honestly just don't, I don't see it happening. If someone was bringing like a bear into the park, I would be like, okay, we got to go home. But like a, a normal sized dog, not even concerning. We can coexist. Didn't even get a, a little bit of purchase there. Listen to this one, Prezo. Ask him how he would do it. Uh, I mean, you're making fun of me, but it's the way that, it, that Google told me to do it. Dogs have a latching reflex when they bite onto their prey. So you wait for them to bite your hand, and then you shove your fist down their throat, and they suffocate. I'm sure it would hurt like a motherfucker. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I would be like, you know, ha 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 ha, that's what you get. Like, I'm sure I would be screaming, but like, <laughs> please stop. He came at me first, man. I don't think you can grab the bone, bro. I don't think it's, I don't, it's too smooth to grab. It's too smooth to grab. Right there. Like this, right? <laughs> Help. Arbitrarily picks a spot. This is definitely it. You know what? I actually, I feel like we need to be over more. Like maybe here. Oh, I think we, we let go too late. We let go of our arm too late. Otherwise, we would have had momentum there. He's never getting past this. Life finds a way, okay? At least we're not playing Balatro. <laughs> what do you mean? Why well, we played enough today? That's all I'm saying. Yeah. 
There we go. There we go. The worst part of the when you ban someone during ballot troll is the unban request is always like way over the top. It's always like you're right. I for a minute there I lost my decorum. I should not have resorted to an ad hominem attack. It's beneath my level of character, and I have taken a long look into the mirror to examine the impetus that led me to this. And you're like, brother, it's okay, just sorry, just say sorry, and like, it's all good. <laughs> right here. That's exactly the most recent one. Could have told you that. But then again, like the, the badge that they have, and listen, I'm not leaving it up to chat. This is a cheer tatorship. They have a fighting game event badge, which makes me think that if they could reform, they would have reformed by now. But that being said, you know, I mean, a, a perma ban is like, you know what? Twitch actually needs better moderation settings. Uh, much like the Coke machine, that, you know, you could choose to turn a dial and have, like, Coke Zero to Coke 100. What about, like, a, a timeout and being unable to chat is ruthless? But what about, like, soft uh, punishments? Like, for the next week, you don't have access to emotes. And, like, I don't know, your messages, like, dissolve in three seconds in the chat. So if you have to constantly keep... Typing, or you only get to type like once per emote only, or like an allotment of letters per hour, or something like that. That would be such a better punishment than like, because right now, all I've got is like, don't do that, or like, you can't chat for 600 seconds, which is like, they may never come back, or you can't chat ever again. Like, that's basically like, you can get a, a, a warning or thrown in prison for life. You should be able to have like more creative punishment, man. So that they still, like, you know, they, they're not stoked about it, but they're like, it serves as a more effective deterrent. Can only view on 0 0.7x speed? Oh, man. No audio. You're not pulling up, just swinging? I see what you're saying. <laughs> Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Try releasing earlier. First time I've ever heard that one. I'm, I apologize, it's hypocritical. I don't like when people in my chat make those jokes. I think it lowers the standards of humor in the chat. I didn't know what else to say. Oh, that's, dude, what if you could just, I guess advertisers would kind of hate it, right? If you were like, hey, you've been behaving badly, watch 10 minutes of straight ads as a punishment. The optics of that are kind of bad because I'm sure the advertisers are like, bro, what the fuck? Our ads are sick. <laughs> we put a lot of work into that ad. You don't want to watch it nine times in a row every half hour? Come on, man. <clears throat> Again. Why is his ass climbing so badly? No, no, no! I'm not even looking at the, the game anymore. I'm just looking at chat.
You have to post a picture of yourself to get back into chat. Oh, man, we can't do that. It's definitely TOS, but that would be sick. No disrespect. I'm sure all of you are, like, super hot. But, like, it would actually... Do you know how good it would feel to ban somebody and then see what they look like in the on-ban request? I would actually be like, I'm sure... <laughs> no disrespect. <laughs> this is fucked up. I'm sure there would be a lot of times where I was like, I'd be like, bro, I should be the one apologizing. I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I'm sorry I didn't know. I get it now. Come on, man. I'm just saying. Or post your mile time. Exactly. I'm not saying only ugly people are mean. I'm saying that hot people are probably doing hot people shit and not backseating in Balatro. It's like... A <laughs> it just, like, doesn't that seem like it passes the smell test to you? That just makes sense. To I could be wrong. I don't have any data to back it up. It's a sound theory to me. I've been banned from chats before. I don't think my selfie is getting, getting me saved from anybody else's chat. Twitch.tv slash Denny's is definitely gonna like, they're not bringing me back. Can I post you bumping yourself in the Discord? It's so funny. Thank you, Chibli! I told the chat that I did that and they all laughed too. I, was, I thought it was a great bit. People declined to watch the video, and I said, not on my watch. You are not having another conversation until at least some person says, that was funny. <laughs> okay, ready? Ready? Ready! Oh, we grabbed, we grabbed it, we grabbed it. <laughs> we had it. I'm not saying this to besmirch other streamers at all. I swear it to you. It's crazy to me that there's like people on this website that have been streaming for like 12 years and then they're like, I can't wait to go live today and play like 12 hours of this 7 out of 10 game and they can make it entertaining for their audience. Like that's actually aspirational. Am I the insane one or are they the insane one or maybe we're both insane? Like there's really like streamers out there that are like, Wednesday! Escape from Tarkov for 12 hours today! Let's go! That, I, I can't bring... I guess I could do that with Isaac now that I think about it. That's true. I was pretty stoked to play Isaac all the time. Well... Oh. Not even close. Not even close. What do you think? Maybe something like this? <laughs> oh, man. What do you mean I'm getting very good at the beginning of the game? This has got to be like close to the end, right? This is your quiet quitting game? What are you talking about? We're, we're bringing the heat, man. Just because it doesn't have like a fucking hot demon with a staff or something like that going, uh, 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 it's not a real video game. Reductive ass. You ever realize it's... 
I'm just trying to think about where I'm going with this. Whenever people tell you their favorite movie, I feel like you often learn a lot about them. Sometimes it's like the wedding crashers and you're like, okay, I know what I'm dealing with here. Someone who likes to laugh and they're not really concerned with like, oh, I want to like a movie that is like, says something about my taste. You know, I would say that they're, they're genuine. Or they might be like the umbrellas of Schoenberg and I would be like, okay, have you ever seen it? And they would be like, of course not, no one has. And I'd be like, all right, I see what you're going for here. I feel like, People have fucking terrible taste in video games, though. Like whenever you ask, well, maybe, you know what it is? I think if I asked you your favorite video game, most of you would pick something that has, like, a meaning to your life. You'd be like, oh, it was, like, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. It was fucking, I don't know, Factorio or something like that. But then if I looked at what you actually played, I bet it's 32 hours of League of Legends per week on average. So you tell me, what's actually your favorite game of all time? TF2? All right, well, fair enough. All right. All right. Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door. We love that for you. We love that for you. Ghibli, how do I do this, please? How do I do this? I know you've done it. How do I do it? Type uh, longer, because it got flooded out of the chat. What's your favorite movie? I don't know. I don't have an answer for that anymore. Favorite movie I, I saw in the last six months? I've been talking a lot about The Last Duel. I've been talking a lot about uh, The Insider. I've been, I, I really enjoyed rewatching Little Miss Sunshine. It, it hit me the first time and it, it, it hit me even harder, you know, 15 years later. Three Billboards? That's true. I, I very much enjoyed Three Billboards as well. Oh, but the bad guy has an act of redemption at the. Okay, if you want to see bad people get beat up, go watch Rick and Morty, okay? In the real world, sometimes characters are fucking complicated, bro. They're not just like, you know, retribution power fantasies where like bad people suffer physical violence consequences, okay? It's a more complex work than that. Okay. Both hands touch green spot. Let go earlier and go up into the right diagonally. Both hands, this way, and let go earlier. Nope, you're lying. You're lying to me. You're lying to me. <laughs> you are a liar. You don't deserve that TikTok I sent over. I'm just kidding. I didn't really make it, so. I'm not pretending. <laughs> Is this difficult? Um, I mean, it's a very easy thing to fail at. Does that make it difficult? I don't know. But the, the cost to doing badly is, like, not that bad. You know, you just come back up. I wouldn't say it's hard. You know what's hard is like, you know, trying to do like a thousand pound deadlift and then failing. Like that causes you physical pain. This is actually like, it's pretty easy. I'm just not succeeding. Okay, Chibli. You have the floor. Let go earlier and do diagonal up and right. Is this, is this the correct spot, Chibli? Is this the correct spot? Bro, it's probably higher. I don't know. Okay, fair enough. 
I was gonna say, it's like two or three letters. Come on, like how, how long could it take here? And do I need to generate a swing first? One swing. Okay. You are, I know that looks bad. You're actually right. I got so much more lateral movement than I normally get. One hand? Oh, it's not a two-handy. Okay, I understand. Fuck, it's 135. If you're still watching this, like, on Twitch, more power to you. If you're watching this on YouTube, that's crazy, bro. You're a real one for sure. There we go. <laughs> we go, we go, we go. What are you trying to say? Well, I mean, like, when you got, like, some chat activity to distract you, that's one thing. I'm just saying, like, you're, you're a true enjoyer if you're watching this on YouTube without the ability to influence the stream. He's so right. He's so right. He gave me exactly the tools. <laughs> Now hold, 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 hold. Don't hit your head. You know what's crazy about the human neurological system? People are like, no, please make the jump. <laughs> please make the jump. <laughs> I think we got to do another another jump. Don't jump, you can make it. All right, all right. You're right. Yeah. Huge, huge. This is the furthest I've ever been. It's crazy that you can stub your toe and know that it's gonna hurt before you actually feel the pain. No! <laughs> Those greased up, man! Like common sense? No, 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 I mean like, it's crazy that you can know that you hurt yourself like, the thought can manifest in your brain faster than the pain signal actually makes it to your... I don't know where a pain signal originates. I guess your sensory neurons in your foot are like, don't do that again, and then your brain is like, ow. But, like, it's crazy that you can almost have like maybe half of a second of no being like i'm gonna enjoy this solace right now before i actually feel the pain that's kind of crazy man Like this. You swing right, swing left. Oh my gosh, Chibli, you fucking genius. <laughs> you fucking genius. Greatest explainer of all time. That's crazy, man. Honestly, I would trade that power for knowing whether or not it's a poop or a fart. You may want to see a doctor. And I say that as someone, like I'm not knocking it, but like, 
Right. My perception as an adult is that you should know. At least like 99% of days on the planet, you should know whether you're going to poop or fart. Like if you're not actively experiencing symptoms of illness, you should be 100% confident. What the hell are we going to do here, man? Oh, I think I got an idea. Farts are fucking annoying, though, dude. I, I know that I'm... This is, like, semi-relatable, which is maybe, like, my favorite type of content. Help, help, help. I know that I'm, like, a top 1% farter in a bad way. But that means, you know, with 10,000 people watching, there's 100 motherfuckers like me out there right now. So this is more for them than anything else. I wish you could just... Tell your body to fucking chill out on the farts, man. And I, I don't mean like, oh, farting is annoying. But like in a situation where you don't want to fart because it's like impolite or kind of gross. Like on an airplane, for example. You should be able to like push like a spot on your ear and be like delay farts for eight hours. Because I, I don't know if anybody else is like this. I get on the airplane, and after, like, an hour of being on the airplane, a fart bubbles up in my intestine. But then it, it approaches the aperture, and it's like, let me out. And I'm like, I can't let you out. So you squeeze a little harder, and the pressure differential sends it, like, back up into the intestine. But when it sends it back up, it always hits, like, a spot that, like, bubbles up and then, like, dissipates into your body and kind of like feels weird and then you get like it's like i'll be back bro i'll be back and then 10 minutes later it comes back and it's they brought friends man and you're like i literally i cannot fart here and they just keep like going back like they go in the three prime, three prime to five prime direction it's so and you're like your stomach is like it, it hurts man Now, if you don't have stinky farts, then you can just let it fly. And I'm jealous of you, like I'm none the wiser. If you do have stinky farts like me, and you think that you know we live in a society, you can't just let those go on a crowded airplane with like hundreds of people around you. Like that's, it's just not done. It's just not the way we live in a society, man. You gotta take pride in them? Nah, man. I'm like that... I think that being overly prideful about your stinky farts is a sensitive response. You're saying, yeah, bro, I have the stinkiest farts. It actually owns. Nobody's got stinky farts like me. I am choosing to, you know, elevate myself and try to be like a, a higher order being that's like, I don't want people crop dusting me, so I'm not gonna crop dust them. I'm following the golden rule. And unfortunately, I'm the one who suffers as a result, but, you know, maybe, maybe the world would be a better place if more people behave like that. I knew that one was going nowhere. And I've like, I don't know what to say. I think it's just, I remember growing up, my grandpa was a prodigious farter as well. I definitely think I got his uh, digestive tract. Because people say you can control it with your diet. I've been like this since I was like 14 years old. I think it's like an epigenetic response to growing up in Ontario or something like that. Like breathing in all the Hamilton pollution like caused my fart genes to be expressed. It was like you're living in a stinky environment. You should, you know, when in Rome. I don't actually live in Hamilton. Well, I've never lived in Hamilton, I should say. But, but my diet has changed so much since I was... Uh, 14, you know, I went from eating Nature Valley granola bars and I mean really just a lot of like salami sandwiches to like I was a vegetarian for a while I lived in Korea had exactly the same problem uh, You know diets changed a lot over the last 10-15 years nuked all of my 
gut bacteria with ciprofloxacin, rebuilt it with probiotics and, and kefir, and I'm st I still got the same thing, man. There's something, there's something in there. Can I go in dairy free? That might be the way. It hurts because I like cheese a lot, but um, we eat a lot of Korean food. Korean food is very rarely dairy full. I'm like, I'm not eating cheese like Boki, let's be real. I do love cheese a lot though. I would also love not stinking up the joint. <laughs> No! And then people are always like, eat more fiber. And I'm like, I honestly, I would go band for band with you on fiber. A, I eat a lot of uh, whole grain carbohydrates. B, I eat a lot of whole fruits. And I take 10 grams of fiber supplement a day because that was the first thing I thought of when I was getting too much gas. I actually think it's possible I might be getting too much fiber at this point. Oh, you can grab bushes. Thank you. Whoa. You might be over-fibered. See, that's tough. Because, like, removing cheese from the ecosystem is um, not necessarily trivial, but not hard. But there's no shot I'm removing bread and grains from my diet. Like, it's one of those, I would rather die, like, 18 months earlier. That's, that's something I'm unwilling to compromise on. Remove the supplement, though? Yeah, but they taste good. <laughs> and they were really expensive. Mama Liz's fiber oil. There you go. Yeah, whey protein is not good for them. I mean, if you've never taken whey protein, it has like a destructive effect on your digestive tract. At least the smell. Also, like, if you don't wash out the bottle within 30 minutes of fin finishing the bottle, when you do the dishes later that night, you are going to want to fucking chastise yourself at the very least. It's, it actually is like what garbage smells like. Like garbage is like a, a cacophony of various smells. Whey protein is like it generates the entire cacophony in, in one ingredient. But it's like, what are you going to do, brother? You're not going to eat like seven T-bone steaks a day. And the, yeah, the, the stink stays in the plastic, man. So, like, if, any, if you don't wash it once, you're probably chill. If you don't wash it, like, two times, the bottle's never going to be the same. It's not that hard to rinse it out afterwards. I'm pushing back on that. I think it's hard to do almost anything with 100% compliance. Being 100% compliant in any task is, is hard enough in itself. I'm not saying it's the hardest thing in the world, but dude, we should banter more. We're actually fucking climbing now. No! Jinx. Oh, man. I think we made the best of it today. Woke up a little lightheaded, woke up a little congested. I did the thing, I, I'm sure that this is a, a very common bit. I woke up at 5.15 a.m., 15 minutes before my alarm went off. Last night when going to bed, I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be a little bit sick tomorrow. Woke up at 5.15 a.m., and I was like, I feel amazing. I'm up before my alarm. You know one of those sleeps where you're like, you were asleep the whole night, you didn't wake up, but also somehow you have a memory of the entire night? 
And then you're delusional and you're like, I feel amazing. And then uh, I went down the stairs and I was like, I could totally work out this morning. And on like stair three, my head was like the, the TikTok. <sighs> you don't look so good. You need some water? We don't have any fucking water. Every street light reveals a picture in reverse. Still it's so much clearer. So true. I forgot my shirt at the water's edge. The moon is low tonight. Best song off of Automatic for the People? I don't know. I do really like... Uh, Man on the Moon. I really like Ebo the Letter. What else is on Automatic for the People? I've always been more of a, a radio, or sorry, a murmur guy from REM, but I do like the, I do like the, the more like major label stuff too. Woo. I gotta add some REM to the Peloton playlist, man. I added a couple songs yesterday. I added Shine Blockers <laughs> by Big Boy because I talked about it. No, my head. We could do some REM. I mean, I'll be honest with you. You know, the Peloton playlist, you don't just have to put your favorite songs on there because some of your favorite songs are not appropriate for the Peloton. But I'm also not going to put on some garbage just because it's like high BPM or something like that. But you, there's some REM bangers that would hit. What's the Frequency Kenneth? Seems to me like a, a great song to have on, on the Peloton playlist. Orange Crush has got that ticka 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 and then you get in the vibe. Dun dun dun. It could totally work. And then, I mean, Radio Free Europe is just a given. It, you, you could even sprint through the, the chorus at the end. I also, like, here's the thing. I know Shiny Happy People is a controversial song for uh, REM fans. They made it almost as a parody of music that's overly saccharine. But I'm here to tell you, Michael Stipe, when you got the fucking gas, you don't get to choose whether your song is good or bad. God chose for you already. It's a great song. And then the lady from the B-52s singing the, the other part of the hook. I'm saying it. R.E.M.? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, all right. 152, we, we go again. <laughs> we go again. It's honestly kind of comforting to be back here. What was I saying? REM has to be one of the most underrated bands on earth. If you're like 24 years old, do you have any concept of the fact that for like two years they were actually the most popular band in the world, but for some reason have like so much less cultural legacy than almost any other band that size from that era? Maybe it's because they weren't that good, but they fucking were that good, man. They were not boomer BTS. <laughs> Nothing against BTS for them, for that matter. But we. No. Michael Stipe voice not that good. Oh no, it's a voice, Andy. Here we go. Let me guess. And by that metric, I guess your favorite singer, Kelly Clarkson. She is an amazing singer. I can't deny that. She's even got some, some radio pop songs that I think are pretty good. But let's not go crazy, okay? Have you heard the... Jungkook song he sings about fucking? Yeah, man. 
Every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's a good song. Now, is it Song of the Summer? No, because I think it came out like eight months ago. That's, that's got to be like a mid-2023 banger. Song of the Summer is Steal My Sunshine by Len, yet again. When, when a better song comes out, like... We'll fucking give it its props, but we're still, <laughs> we're still waiting, man. I've been waiting 25 years. Best song of the 90s? Nuts on the table? That's really tough, man. I will say I disagree with Pitchfork Media. You know how Ringo isn't even the best drummer in the band? Come on, Gold Sounds isn't even the best pavement song off of Crooked Rain, Crooked Rain. That's probably... I don't know, that's tough, honestly. There's a lot of classics on that. I'm kind of like a silence kid, elevate me later type of guy, but... Summer Babe? Excuse me, that's on Slanted and Enchanted. And if we're talking about Slanted and Enchanted, it's, for me, it's in this mouth of desert. Gwing, 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 gwing. Cut Your Hair is a good song. Carry the Zero by Built to Spill. That's on the playlist. You've, you've chosen a song on the playlist. No, okay, I didn't do Chibli Strat. I didn't do Chibli Strat. Only Shallow. It's a bop. Only Shallow is a bop. In the, in the morning? I don't know in the morning. Wait, do I? I feel like I, I can hear in the morning in my head. Is that a DJ Shadow thing? Is that Duntel? What is that? I'm thinking of also In the Meantime by Space Hog. That's built to spill again. <laughs> sorry, sorry. That's built to spill again. My mistake. Do you like spiritualized? I do. Um... Ladies and gentlemen, we're floating in space. Goaded album. I think I'm in love, which I believe is track two. That's on the Peloton playlist. And you know that I'm ride or die for that song because it's like eight minutes long. I'm not afraid to put a, a long song on the Peloton playlist. Plus, it's got like a serious like uh, shift about halfway through, so you can start. You can do like a long in the saddle, then a long climb section. Has this playlist been leaked? I'm leaking a few songs a day. There's some pure garbage on it, by the way. Oh, no. Molly Hatchet, Flirting with Disaster. Songs to fucking pedal really fast to. This is for Chibli. Swing once. Close, close, close. One more, one more. Worst song on the playlist? That's tough, man. That's tough, because I, I, I made myself a rule on the playlist. If I ever skip a song twice, it comes off the playlist. So stuff, like, it's pretty ruthless, man. It's like, you ever see the Nick Cannon movie Drumline? Like, these songs have got to be on the top of their game, or they're getting cut. Like, I allow myself one skip because sometimes you've been climbing for 15 minutes and then another song comes on with, like, a, a 53 BPM and you're like, come on, give me something. Give me, or, or, like, two 10-minute long songs in a row. But if I ever skip it two times in a row, it's over for you. Cherub Rock's making the cut. Unskippable song. Actually... Me, personally, Cherub Rock would make my shortlist best songs of the 90s. Okay, here you go. Here you go. Pull it up. 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 It's a left-hand rule on this one. A 
I'm just not comfortable with this. Try again. Try again. Any cocktail twins on the playlist? I don't. I don't think they fit the vibe. Because you know what I'm thinking is like, I don't want to cry when I'm on the bike. But I'm actually, I probably have like a 20% hit rate for, for crying on the bike. It was like 100% when I was writing the movies. But with songs, it's still like 20%. It gets me all the time. Ready? Ready? Here we go. It's two o'clock. <laughs> it's two o'clock. It's two o'clock. Okay, I got one more in me. If I could get to the checkpoint, that would be nice. You ever bike the seawall? I have. My, my hot take is that the seawall is amazing. I know a lot of people who don't live in Vancouver are actually like, I watched a video essay about how it's underutilized. That may be true. I can't necessarily disagree with that. Like, sure, it's, wow, the seawall is so great, but wouldn't it be nice if there was like a JJ Bean every 200 meters instead of like nature in the ocean? That's probably not what they were getting at, okay? I'm being overly reductive. But what I will say is that if you are, if you're cycling predominantly as a workout, the seawall can be very annoying because just to be honest, you shouldn't be there. That is for people on a pleasure cruise. It's for tourists on rented bicycles from the Burrard Hotel. Nothing is more annoying than when you're walking on the seawall and Lance Armstrong passes by you in like full lycra and like he says on your left, he's probably 80 meters away from you. But by the time the sound reaches your ear, like he's already passed you. And then like as the cyclist as well, you have like uh, people that are on like motorized scooters and stuff like that. You have people that are taking a photo of somebody in the bike lane because the bike lane is adjacent to the water. And then they just like, they, they line the photo up and look through the aperture and they walk backwards like without ever checking what's going on behind them and stuff like that. Like there's some, there's some, you shouldn't be trying to become king of the mountain on the, uh, on the seawall. Then you got to dismount at Third Beach. Don't even get me started on the Chip Wilson motherfucker. Seawall, beautiful part of the city. Holy cow, you can go all the way from like the uh, Iron Workers Bridge. You go down uh, around Stanley Park, English Bay, Beach Avenue. So beautiful. Yale Town, oh, it's gorgeous. You go around the little curve there. All of a sudden, you're in Olympic Village. You're at Science World. You're cruising along. You get down to Kitsilano, and then all the NIMBY motherfuckers are like, we built a fence here. Um because we want private beach access. And then your ass has to ride on Northeast Marine Drive or whatever the fuck it is. And like all the roads are like, please don't bike on this road. And I'm like, I gotta go somewhere, man. I gotta go somewhere. And then you get to the beach and you're pedaling on sand. That's where it's time. Like, unless you're going all the way to UBC, you gotta turn around at that point. Who are you talking to? I am experiencing brain death. Never mind. Get to the checkpoint. And once you get out by UBC, like, the drivers will kill you. On the seawall, it's a cyclist paradise. Because anytime a, a Evo accidentally drives on the seawall, everyone pulls out their phone to film them and laugh at them. But as soon as you get out of the... The protected seawall, and you, you got to be on, I don't even know, that's, I think that's another marine drive or something like that. All of a sudden, they're like, you're in our territory now. It's a nice place to live, honestly. Wee! Wee! Don't 
break on me. Don't break on me. Wow. Okay, keep it going. You see the TikTok of small flat Michael? I did not, but I'm I'm curious. Small flat Michael. What is small flat Michael? The Linky? <laughs> no, no, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, we go again, bro. We go again. <laughs>